In this video, I'll be showing you 9 things you need to look out for before buying any kind of TV. Also to increase your knowledge base a little so the sales guy doesn't confuse you. So let's jump right in. The first thing to look out for is the display technology. By display technology, we mean LED, OLED, ULED, QD OLED, QLED, QNED or NanoCell. This is really important because it determines the overall picture quality of that TV. That includes contrast, brightness, viewing angle and even the price of the TV to a large extent. It's as a result of the display type. An OLED TV for instance is expected to have lower brightness with a higher contrast along with deeper blacks. Such TVs wouldn't do so well in a very bright room but can deliver the best picture quality possible. A QLED TV and ULED TV will deliver better brightness with a wider color gamut because of the inclusion of the quantum dot technology. The quantum dot delivers a wider color gamut which results in better picture quality. Nanocell on the other hand means that particular TV is designed by LG with a special nanocrystal technology that delivers sharper colors with a wider viewing angle. Nanocell TVs are great but according to observations doesn't deliver as much contrast as QLED, ULED or OLED TVs. QNED on the other hand tells you that's an LG TV. QNED is a combination of QLED and Nanocell technology in one display. Which means the TV can be as colorful as a QLED display while delivering the advantages of a Nanocell display. QD OLED is a subclass of OLED which involves the combination of OLED and the quantum dot technology from the QLED. This is practically the best kind of display out there for now as it delivers the advantages of both QLED and OLED without the drawbacks in both technologies. LED means that TV lacks any form of display enhancement probably to meet up with the lower price point. So which is best? In ascending order we have LED, then NanoCell, then ULED and QLED, then QNED, OLED and QD OLED being the best. The next thing you must consider before getting a TV is backlighting. Backlighting simply talks about the light source for the TV screen display. Usually LED bulbs are used as a light source but if a TV is OLED or QD OLED that means the TV is lighted up by its own pixels and backlighting can be neglected. But for other screen types such as ULED, QLED, NanoCell, LEDs and QNED the light source would be stated on the TV product. LED backlighting simply means that TV is lighted up from behind using LED bulbs with no special enhancements. That means the TV might be bright but blacks could appear a bit like grey because of the light source from behind the screen. If a TV features local dimming, it simply means these LED light bulbs behind the screen are being controlled individually by a CPU according to color being projected on the screen. This means different regions of the screen can have different brightness levels depending on the color being displayed on that region of the screen. That means unlike a TV with no local dimming, blacks would appear black and not grey because there's no light coming from behind at that particular region of the screen. Another backlighting type is mini LED. Mini LED simply means that the TV has local dimming but the LED bulbs are smaller in size and more in number. This means that brightness and dimming in smaller areas of the screen can be controlled individually. So even smaller images or thin lines with bright colors can be more accurately traced out without having light escaping through the edges. The phenomenon of light escaping through the edges is called blooming. Blooming is usually noticed when watching a TV in a dark room. So if a TV features mini LED backlighting, it means there are reduced blooming compared to what you'd see in a non-mini LED TV and the local dimming is more accurate. The number of areas of the screen where brightness can be controlled individually are known as dimming zones. And TVs with more dimming zones produce better blacks. So which is better? In ascending order, we have LED backlighting, full array local dimming and mini LED. But they are all not as good as the self-lit screens, which are OLED and QD OLED. For a more fundamental breakdown of display types and backlighting, check the video at the top of the screen. The third thing you must consider before buying a TV is the refresh rate. Every video you see on your TV is made of images that interchange so fast you call them a video. Same is the case for video games. Refresh rate or RR simply refers to the frequency or for the sake of this video the speed at which the screen can flip or transition between these images. And this determines the smoothness at which a TV can display a fast moving video or game. This is a feature every gamer must look out for in a TV. TVs with higher refresh rates deliver smoother transition in a fast moving scenario for both gaming and videos. If a TV has up to 60Hz refresh rate, 
It indicates an average graphic processor speed and would do well. But for most gaming consoles, especially games with 4K and 8K resolutions, or maybe you own a PS5 or Xbox Series X, you need at least 120Hz refresh rate and above. Also look for the feature VRR. VRR means variable refresh rate and can enable you adjust the refresh rate of the TV's processor speed according to demand. So in this case, the best is 120Hz and above. The fourth thing to consider is screen resolution. Talking about 8K, 4K, QHD or 2K, FHD and HD ready. Screen resolution is simply the number of pixels on the screen which determine the size of the content the TV screen can take and the depth of image detail that can be displayed. An 8K TV, for instance, can play an 8K content and 4K, QHD, FHD, HD and all lower resolution content via upscaling. If you're getting this kind of TV, just know that 8K are large image and video file formats, which means lots of data consumption for streaming and premium subscriptions for cable TV. Also, upscaling means stretching a smaller video format to fit a wider screen, so quality losses might happen when watching smaller resolution content. Getting a 4K TV simply means you can't watch or stream 8K content, but can view and stream 4K content and QHD down to HD and SD content via upscaling. Getting QHD or 2K TV means no 4K or 8K for you, just QHD and below. FHD which is full high definition means no 8K or 4K or 2K videos for you, but you can watch 1080p quality videos and below. HD ready or simply HD on the TV means you can only watch 720p and below. So which is best? In ascending order we have HD, FHD, QHD or 2K. 4K and 8K UHD. The fifth thing you must consider before buying a TV is the TV platform or operating system. Talking about Google TV, FIDA, Tizen OS, WebOS and Roku TV. Before we continue, note that there are other helpful informative videos like this on this channel. Simply subscribe or like so they can be recommended for you. Also check the description for links to the products we recommend. The TV platform is simply the software operating system the TV runs, just like you have Mac and Windows OS for computers. This will determine the kind of apps you can run, the TV user interface, the remote control design, the behavior as well as the software stability of the TV. In as much as all TV platforms give you access to lots of apps and games, they still vary in terms of capabilities, looks, response, speed and the number of ads you get to battle with. So which smart TV platform is the best? We initially carried out a survey on our audience who currently use these TVs to rate their experiences and this was the result. It seems Google TV really impresses users, followed by Tizen users, after which WebOS and Roku TV are preferred and then we have Vida OS with zero volts. We can find Google TV and Roku TV on any brand but Vida OS would be found on a Hisense TV. WebOS will be found on an LG TV, Tizen OS will be found on Samsung TV. The sixth thing you must consider before buying a TV is the pixel panel type. If you view a TV screen through a magnifying glass or a drop of water, you'd observe little colorful strips within each pixel. The arrangement of these little colorful strips determines the pixel panel type. The pixel panel type can be vertical aligned or VA and inclined plane switching or IPS panel. TV screens with vertical aligned panels deliver better contrast, while TVs with IPS panel usually have a wider viewing angle. So for which is best? Well, it depends on the choice and usage. For wide rooms, you'd find an IPS panel more useful. Other than that, TVs with VA panel delivers better contrast and image quality. Nevertheless, this only applies to LCD-based TVs such as LED, QLED, QNED, ULED and nanocells. OLEDs on the other hand have the unique pixel type and delivers best in both contrast and viewing angle. The seventh thing to consider is the sub-pixel arrangement. So remember the little colorful strips we talked about? They are called sub-pixels and most TVs would feature a BGR or blue-green-red arrangement while other TVs would feature an RGB or red-green-blue arrangement. A BGR arrangement would result in better text clarity, making it fit as a good monitor display. An RGB arrangement on the other hand would result in better video quality, but might not make a good monitor because of issues with text clarity, especially in viewing tiny text. The eighth thing you must consider before buying a TV is Dolby Atmos support. 
A TV with Dolby Atmos supports would perform excellently with a soundbar and maximize the 3D sound effect intended for Dolby Atmos soundbars and home theaters. The ninth thing to consider is power consumption. Power consumption is also a major factor to consider, especially if you stay in areas with metered or limited power supply. Check the pack carefully for a power rating. Some manufacturers will give the power rating in watts, others might give the power rating in amps, and state the voltage. If this is the case, simply multiply the voltage rating by the current rating. You'd get the rated power in watts. For example, if a TV is rated 100 to 220 volts and 0.2 amp, simply confirm your country's voltage rating, let's say 220 volts for most countries in Africa. So using the standard P equal to IV where P is power and I is current and V is voltage, divide 220 volts by 1.2 amp. The tenth thing you must consider before buying any TV is the brand. Some brands communicate certain strengths and basic expectations along with certain expected weaknesses. Sony TVs for instance feature a long service life with one of the best displays you'd find. You'd likely get an OLED or QD OLED display with one of the best sound quality you can get on any TV. But Sony TVs are a bit pricey. LG TVs would most likely come loaded and packed with features like the Magic Remote, OLED, NanoCell or QNET display having WebOS. LG also has a thing with understanding the lifestyle and culture of any country they sell any specific model, although reliability is just not their strong point. Hisense and TCL always has a way of making cool TVs affordable and combining up-to-date features in an attractive price point. A Hisense TV can feature any open-source smart TV OS with a QLED or ULED display with a TV model for every price point. Hisense does well when it comes to build quality. But when it comes to longevity, there's this question mark. It seems like some Hisense TV products just have a lifespan the TV can't cross. TCL would most likely feature QLED display with Google TV or any other open source smart TV platform, also at an affordable price. You would also find OnQ Audio on most models. Samsung TVs would give you high durability depending on the display type. Samsung TVs deliver well in terms of brightness and would likely feature Tizen OS or any open source smart TV platform. You can check out some of our other videos to help your buying decision or simply subscribe. And remain your free device consultant, Justin. Bye-bye.